listening to our Japan fans. Today's show, we're going to talk about chit chat. So let's get going. This is the seventh year of the Sales Japan series podcast broadcasting around the world from the Beverly Hills of Japan, Minato-ku, here in downtown Tokyo. It is Chic Central. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, Dale Carnegie Tokyo franchise owner, the president of Dale Carnegie Tokyo Training, and the three-time best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery, which is Zaego in Japanese, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery. Plus, stop wasting money on training in Japanese. Training de Okani o Budeni Sumo wa Yamimasho. And these are all available now on Amazon. In this podcast, I want to help you to survive and even better, thrive in business. One, sell more, do it more easily. Two, exceed your targets. In fact, blow up your targets. Three, make some serious, serious money. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Libsyn. But we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcast hosted by Libsyn. Unlike many other hosting organizations, Libsyn have a strict policy that does not allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on Apple Podcasts. Mondays, the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show podcast. Tuesday, the Presentations Japan series. And every second Tuesday, the Business Touches in No Oshie Show. Wednesdays, the Sales Japan series. Thursdays, the Leadership Japan series. And every second Thursday, the Business Pro Podcast Show. Fridays, the Japan Business Mastery Show podcast. Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews. Now, this is episode number 331. 331. And today we're talking about be very careful with your chit chat when selling. We salespeople love to talk. We're enthusiastic about our differentiation, our solution, our features, the benefits, and a myriad other remarkable things about what we sell. Many salespeople have never moved out of first gear and are stuck there just telling the buyer all about their widget. The more advanced salespeople are asking questions. And trying to become the trusted advisor, helping the client grow their business. Regardless, one of the biggest failings of salespeople, and I definitely include myself here, is we talk too much. We want to connect with the buyer, to build the rapport, the trust. And so we do that by talking, talking, talking. If you ever realize that the only sound in the room or online is your voice, then you are talking too much. This happens to me still. I get on a roll, and away I go, all enthusiasm and belief, and then it clicks. Wait a minute. I'm doing all the talking. It's time to ask a question. Shut up and let the buyer do the talking. We know what we know, but we need to know a lot more about the client and their business, and the only way that will happen is if we let them talk. When we first meet the client, we're not sure of each other. They are wondering if this meeting is a waste of time or not. We are wondering if we have what they need. Usually in Japan, the meetings start with some light conversation before we get into the meat of the discussion. If we're a bit nervous about this meeting, then we can easily find ourselves talking too much and too fast. The early stage of the meeting is a chance for both sides to get to know each other, and it shouldn't be a one way conversation. By letting them talk, we pick up hints as to what type of person they are. I had a funny experience with the foreign president of a large, well known global manufacturer here. I arrived early for the meeting, as you do in Japan. Was shown into a large conference room and was patiently sitting there waiting for the president to arrive for the meeting. As he slipped effortlessly into his chair, he dexterously skimmed his business card across the table like he was dealing me a poker hand. 
That was a hint. He was obviously brand new here and hadn't picked up anything about Japanese business culture as yet. I started with an effort to engage him in some light, small talk to get to know him. He stopped me after about 10 seconds of this and said, let's get down to business. I concluded he was a time is money driver, personality type, and that I could be very direct with him and make suggestions which would be best for the firm. Find out more. We come back from the break. Today's show is brought to you by our public courses, but we also are doing custom in-house programs. We do them in both Japanese and English. We do them in our super safe classroom and live online. On March the 6th and 7th, we'll have our high impact presentations program. Two days, two instructors, everything videoed. Amazing course, amazing amount of feedback, an ability to really refine what you're doing as you go through the program. So by the end, what comes out is a very sophisticated, very, very professional presentation. Brilliant program. We'll repeat that course also in April on the 20th and 21st. On the 18th of March, we'll have our Dale Cunningham course, and we'll also repeat that course on the 12th of April. Dale Cunningham course has five drivers. You know, it's like uh, leadership, how to get people to follow you. It's communication skills, how to be concise, how to be clear. It is people skills, how to get on with all types of people. It's stress management, because often when we're stressed, we're not very effective in our work. So how to re uh, relieve ourselves of that stress that's holding us back and really work properly. And also, how to expand our comfort zone, how to challenge things, how to take us into areas where we're not very good, which we haven't done before, things which are really quite stressful in the sense that they're new and it's a bit hard. So we work on all of these things in the program. Brilliant course. Go to our website at www.dale-carnegie.co.jp. That's www.dale-carnegie.co.jp. JP. Lots and lots of value there for you. To do better in Japan, email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. If you like learning by watching video, then we have nearly 2,000 there for you at Tokyo Japan Dale Carnegie TV on YouTube. Welcome back. Normally, we conduct aimless conversations at the start of typical Japanese business meetings. This is fine because both sides are feeling each other out and the key is to make sure that this isn't one-way traffic and that we're giving them plenty of chances to talk from their side. It sounds easy, but the temptation is to often project ourselves too strongly, trying to create a powerful, professional image with the buyer. The key is go in bursts. And if you find your burst is getting too long, then switch the focus to them and off yourself. Some classic questions directed toward the buyer will be, how long have you been in this role? Are you originally from Tokyo? Are most of the team back in the office now or still working remotely? The main course will kick off soon enough, but we need to get them talking. So the question content and answers aren't that important at this stage we can then bridge from these simple conversations into the needs of the firm and where they are heading in the business. The other time we should be very careful is at the end of the sales process, when we are getting to agreement on the solution and what we can do to help. Often, we don't know when enough is enough. And we keep layering on information to really nail down the sale. They've agreed. And actually, the best advice is to shut up about the solution and start talking about the next steps to get the execution piece underway. However, we can often start adding things which pop into our head at this point to try and reinforce their buy decision. These contributions usually don't add much value and, in fact, may snag the sale entirely. Too little information is bad, 
But too much information is also bad. We need to tell them enough to get agreement and not one skerrick more. We may inadvertently flag some issue which hasn't been an issue until we foolishly raised it. It is a good thing to assure them that they have made a wise choice and to try and avoid any buyer's remorse. But be careful about how much we say. Just broad brush comments are fine, such as, I am sure that this new solution will make a real difference for the organization, and we are here to do the follow-up to make sure it works for you. That is enough, without getting into any more detail about the spec or the features, etc. Avoid overselling, where we keep piling on the value after the sale has been agreed. I know it is so tempting to add more, but let's restrain ourselves. They've said yes, so we can move to the follow-up components and focus the conversation on those next steps. This is much safer, and the buyer will be happy to be hearing about the concrete stages to come so they can organize things from their side. If you find yourself blathering away and adding no value to the proposition, then reset. Stop overselling and drop the chit-chat. We want to pivot into the delivery part of the cycle, and we should only talk about that. It requires discipline, because we love to talk, and we love our solution. Before you know it, we're off again. Try very hard to make sure that after the agreement, they are doing more of the talking than us, and keep the balance there. We will get ourselves into a lot less trouble if we do that. Thank you for joining the Sales Japan series. If you found the program useful, then please work on your karma and share this with your family, friends, and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Immediately apply what you've learned today. Go out there and survive. Use it and make some serious money. Bucks, dough, moolah, coin, dosh, lolly, ready, smackers, earners, and bread and honey. Remember, I'm in your corner committed to your success here in Nippon.